Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Helga Maus from Pixel Train. I have to make a new series, Blender 2.91 New Features, because this year is the fourth incarnation of Blender this year. So a big thank you to all the Blender developers and also to you if you support Blender with the help of the development fund or the cloud membership. So Blender is really running this year and that's really great. I make this series new features because I think it's important that you not only hear about new features, but that you go into the new features, learn how they work so that you are better when you work with Blender. Because I see in training a lot that people have heard something, but they still use the old functionalities. So let's take your time and look into the new Blender features. And maybe you find one or two things which you directly want to adapt in your practice. So let's open here on this wonderful new screen from Robin Tran, a recent file. Let's add here the UI overview file here, and you will see this wonderful mirror, which was done by the great Daniel Beistert again. So thanks a lot for this demo material. And in this lesson here, I want to talk with you about the new features in the UI. And I know new features in the UI is not the most sexiest topic, but you will see that you find some stuff which is really, really helpful. So let's get started with that. Let's start here in the Outliner. And the Outliner had some updates in the last release, but also in this release, we have some more stuff. And I think it's really useful in bigger scenes. So let's take a look here. The first thing I want to talk about are here these collections. You know, in practice, I use collections all the time for managing bigger scenes. You pack stuff into collections like groups, but you also organize bigger chunks of your scenes. For example, like Daniel has done it here, the lights, the background or the mirror into collections. And you can then instantiate collections or you can append them or link them to other scenes. So collections are a really important concept. And if you have a bigger scene, you have a whole bunch of collections. To get them organized, there's now a new feature under your right mouse button, which are collection colors. You have eight slots here. And what I do in practice, for example, is that all my light sources are yellow. The background normally I make green or bluish. So let's take green here. And my hero assets like here, for example, the mirror is red. And you see it looks nicer, but you will see that it has some more features. For example, you want to place later another of these mirrors. So let's take the 3D cursor here, make a shift right mouse button, click here onto the floor. And here I want to place a new hero asset. And this is something we normally do in the add menu. So if you now go here to the add menu, you find here collection instances and look at that. Now you see that the colors are also here. And if you have an indicator like a color, hero assets are always red. You are much, much faster now to work with. The same is here in the shift A add menu that also here the collection instances are now colored. And then you can place here your instance, for example, of the mirror. And when the mirror here is placed, you will see that you get here a sign behind that. It's also red. So you directly see again, okay, it's a hero asset, which is referencing here to this mirror collection. I think really cool stuff. Next thing is in bigger scenes, you have to open and close these areas here. And what you now can do is in the last version, I think we had the option that we can walk up and down with the arrow keys on your keyboard through different areas. But now if you want to go into hierarchies, you can also use now left and right mouse button. You see, I can really walk now in this hierarchy completely with my arrow keys on the keyboard. Really nice feature, I think. Then you also see that now we have visual indicators what belongs to which collection here. We have these lines now on the left side and they are also colored in the colors of your collection. So you directly see also in a really long list. Okay, this year is everything red. So maybe somewhere up the whole thing here is a collection which this stuff here belongs and then here begins the green one. So I think that's nice at this point. One question which I've heard in the internet about these colors is if you can change them, we always want to change something. Yes, you can if you go here into the preferences and then you have to go here to the themes. 
you have here now a new section collection colors and here are the eight colors which you can use and change if you like another small feature here inside of the outliner is now this little tick here this is the contribution tick which you had before i think it was in the front now it's here and it's really nice that it's here because if you have opened all the restriction toggles let's do that here really fast you see you have now one block which absolutely makes sense here so i think that's a good position where i would expect this thing so let's get rid of all this stuff again we don't need that at the moment another nice feature here in the outliner is now that the right mouse button seems to understand better on which object you are let's test this so if you are on a collection right mouse button you see here now the colors of the collections and this context menu really looks for collections if you go now here to the modifiers and i make a right mouse button click here on the mirror modifier you see now you have a modifier operations right mouse button so this now seems to work really well also here on the data notes makes sense to have these updates here so thank you for everyone who worked on this here i think that's great here so i think that's about the visual stuff here so let's talk about using now this outliner here and for this i make a new scene here and say new and let's switch here into this new scene and let's add here something which we can use for example let's take here a simple cube in the middle of our scene and what i now want to do is i go here into the modifiers and i add two modifiers for that for example the first thing i want to add is a subdivision surface modifier we can make it simple for example and the next thing i maybe want to add is let's take here a wireframe modifier okay you remember that in the last version of Blender, we had now these functionalities that we can drag and drop all this stuff here. Really great. But what we now can do is we also can drag and drop stuff here in the outliner around. Let's test this directly here. I make a new object, another cube, and I move it here over. And if you now want, for example, to add the same modifiers here, look at that. You can now take a modifier here from the list. Yes, you can also sort them here. You see, this also works now, like expected. But you now can take, for example, only the subdivision modifier here and drag it here to the cube. And now you see, you don't remove it here because this doesn't make sense, but you make a link to this new modifier for this cube here. So let's get rid of that. So make a right mouse button, click here onto it and say delete. And instead of having this here first, I take now first a wireframe, bring it over. Now you see the wireframe here and then you can copy here now the subdivision onto that and I can, like I've done before, resort it. I think that's cool if you have big hierarchies and you want to drag and drop this stuff around. So sorting of modifiers, for example, works. Linking the modifiers by drag and drop now works. And this also works not only for the modifiers, also for constraints and grease pencil effects. That's a really nice thing. Another small thing is also if you need more instances of this cube, for example, you can take now the cube and drag it here into your viewport and you get now a new instance here look at that it's also a really interesting concept so maybe this is something you want to use later also in your production you also can link it here if you like through this little context menu so that's enough now about the outliner the next thing i want to talk about so let's switch back here to the mirror scene i want to talk about these new search fields here and these new search fields are named the property search and a property search is a really good helper you maybe know them from other applications and i as a trainer find them really useful because most of my students remember a little bit about okay helga said something about sampling but how to find sampling now here in all these categories so i'm now here for example in the render settings where the people think that sampling maybe is and now you can type here sampling and if you now type a little bit of this word you see that now 
you get a result here. And the interesting thing is that this sampling result is really cool. Look at that. It found the category sampling, so it marks them here. So we have it here in the sampling and you can change it here. But in subsurface scattering, for example, there's also a sampling option and it highlights it. So it opens you this area of the properties so that you find exactly what you are looking for and you also see in which category it is and you also see it here in the volumetrics. And if you now take a closer look and this is something I found really late is it not opens here this area. You see all these icons here are now grayed out but here's an icon which is not grayed out. It's colored because this here are the data properties of a curve for example and if you open this up you can also find here for example the sample straight edges and sample even length so it's also something where you find sam so this search here is really intelligent i find it really useful here if you want to delete what's here in the field you can press alt f if you are here over the properties and if you want to start a new search you can press Control F or you go into the field and type it by yourself. So really nice feature here also in the UI. If it comes to search we have two other search functions which we had before but they are now better than before. The one search which I use all the time is F3. So if you press function key 3 over your viewport you have now here your search field. But if you take a look into this search field here, you will see that we have now a fuzzy search. What is a fuzzy search? Fuzzy search means that if you now search something here and you don't know exactly how it's written, you can try to write it. So let's think about the quick smoke effect. I don't know where the quick smoke is, but I know that it's Q and SM something. And you see from these three letters, it finds quick smoke here. That's amazing. And it shows you the breadcrumb navigation where to find it. Really cool if you start learning Blunder that the F3 now really works like a charm. Another area where you have an improved search. Let's go here to the shading world. Let's look where we are. It's not important here. I want to show you, for example, here in the gold, how you can also use the fuzzy inside of these node search fields. You know the node search field is here under add. There's a search field and also if you shift A it here you have here a search and you see I've assigned a keyboard shortcut for this. We can do that directly together because I think it's so useful if you come from other applications where you have to type node names all the time. So what I've done is shift A here right mouse button click then on that and then you can change the shortcut here and shift a is normally here this add menu and so i decided that Control shift a should be the search field here and now we have this search field it's like i've said the search field which you find here normally and if you now type for example sss like subsurface scattering you see it tries to be intelligent it searches for emission and also for subsurface scattering so also here we have this fuzzy search idea which i find really really useful okay last thing and then we close this lesson is if you now go here to the file menu and you go to recent projects I normally have much going on and so I have many different last projects I can see but really often I don't know where they live and now look at that if you now hover with your mouse over one of these recent files you not only have the name marked you also see where these files live on your hard drive and last modified and the size of that so I think nice things which help you to be more efficient inside of Blender. So I hope you find something useful in this lesson and we see each other together in the next lesson. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. Have fun with Blender 2.91.